Isn't that beautiful? I'm trying to get it to sh no, no, don't move. Just I love this beautiful aurora borealis effect right there. Like it really does. It's it's kind of pretty to just sit and watch. Like I know that sounds silly, but it really is pretty to just sit and watch. Let's get good. I'm the gamer under development, and this is the first episode I'm doing of Endless Legend. Inferno, this is the new expansion that contains the Kapaku. Uh, sorry about Battletech being a little bit late, guys. I really wanted to get in there and cover this. Right now, running on the channel, we're going to have Endless Legend Inferno. We're going to have Endless Space 2 Supremacy, and we will have Battletech. It's just running a little late, guys, so don't give up on me yet. Uh, here's the settings. I'm going to leave this up for just a brief second so you all can pause here if you want to see them. I did go with hard difficulty instead of uh, endless difficulty because I haven't played this in a long time and I'm a little bit rusty. So we're going to jump right in as the Kapaku. Very, very excited to show off this faction. Uh, the load time seems to be a little longer than I remember for the Kapaku, but that's kind of okay. That'll give me a chance to explain some of the, the faction traits while it loads. Uh, so they have a lot of really interesting faction traits, but they're all highly terrain-based. So, like, they can only gather food from volcanic terrain. They can terraform stuff into volcanic terrain, and that is a very, very interesting prospect because... When you terraform stuff, it changes the tiles, and I'm wondering if you can, like, terraform an enemy's tiles next to their city to completely wreck their fids. That would be obscenely, obscenely cool, and uh, I, I can't wait to see if that's a thing. Uh, the way you get your Volcaniformers that terraform things to volcanic tiles is by turning in two of a strategic resource. Um, and when you do it, it does one tile and then one tile around each of those tiles. At least at base. I'm not sure if you can upgrade that to get more more space, but that's also important because it means if you want to settle a new region, you have to terraform, put a city down on the terraformed terrain, and then terraform the rest of the region over time. Like, it doesn't just spread naturally. Um, so that's another thing that they have to consider. In order to continue growing their city, you actually have to terraform more. Which I think is kind of their drawback because they're really strong in a lot of other ways. And honestly, when they're on volcanic terrain... They are ridiculously strong. Like, they have so many buffs from it. Oh. Our world was a paradise of ash and fire. Until the gods Mine too. upon us. <laughs> Even with our goals, our ingenuity. I fucking love these guys. They're so cool. <laughs> Dude, whatever. I bet you the Endless fucked their planet. <laughs> Go! <laughs> God, I love these guys. They're so fucking cool looking. Aren't they? Are they not super cool looking? And they have giant stone golems! Oh, are we gonna terraform the entire planet? It will be ours! <laughs> I fucking love these guys. I, I really, really am stoked that Endless Legend got a new faction after so long. For those of you who don't know, Endless Legend is actually the game that inspired me to start this channel. So I'm going to hit F right away to turn on our Fidzy display. Uh, we have some pretty strong tileage here. We've got a glass steel deposit and two titanium deposits, which for these guys is great. Uh, because they need those to make their Volcaniformers. So let's go look at their faction stuff real quick, and then we'll jump into the game, guys. Uh, Alright, so they've got Born of Ash. They can only gather food on volcanic terrain. Their armies have health regen on volcanic terrain. Kapaku units and heroes gain bonus stats on volcanic terrain. They whoop the ass on volcanic terrain. That's what they do. Uh, they have their main quest, of course. Shaman's knowledge. During eclipses, Kapaku shamans can locate confluxes in their own and explored neighboring regions and enjoy increased effects from these confluxes. So what these are, you know how the pearls appear on the map, guys? These are these little blue orb things that appear on the map, and when you pick them up, they give that unit like some sort of bonus. It may be a, an initiative bonus, or it may be a movement bonus. Not only do these guys see those on the map in, in their regions and neighboring regions they've explored, but they also get a bonus like increase to the effect, which is great. Endless Fascination, so they receive science when they search ruins, and they get plus two on terrain with ruins. That's really, really good, because we all know that, like, 
terrain with ruins is kind of a pain in the butt when you're trying to build out your city because it can stop things from being able to be leveled. At least this gives you something a little bit extra for those, which is always nice. Uh, stargazers in summer, the upcoming dust eclipses are always predicted. That's really great. Dust eclipses are awesome. You guys will see. Volcana formation, this is the uh, special army action that allows you to terraform something. We'll get into that a little bit later. The Golem Camp is a Era 2 technology that allows... It's like a Burroughs, guys, except for you can garrison units there, and it adds plus one population to your city, but you can only have one in your city. Uh, so they've got Siege Engineering, which is another interesting thing. When they deal Siege damage, it provides them with industry stockpiles, and there's supposed to be a counter for that on the Empire Management screen, but I don't see it, so maybe we'll see it once we start doing that. Uh, so you've got the Geomancer, the Golem Rider, and the Stone Sentinel. We'll take a closer look at their abilities. There's one thing I want to point out right away, though. Disease Immunity on the Stone Sentinel, which is their starting infantry. That is really, really strong. That is really, really strong. Uh, it's essentially like having the Sisters of Mercy as your starting unit. It's really good. Alchemist Furnace, we start with the ability to get Glass Steel and uh, Titanium, and that's because we need them to make Volcaniformers. And Topography, which is kind of eh. Like, Topography is our eh thing. It's not super great. Uh, okay, so we've turned on Fid's display so we can see stuff. Let's split out some units and go exploring. Now, it looks like we could have some things off this way, so I'm going to split off one unit and begin walking over here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything great that way. We're really just looking for a place to put our starting city. And being fair, most games that I start with these guys, it feels like the the square we start on is actually pretty solid for a starting city. See, like, there's a fumarole here. Um, but it may not be the best. There may be something a little better if we explore around a little bit, so that's what we're going to do. Doesn't look like it, though, huh? I mean, look at that, guys. It really... There's a sick science right here that sticks out to me, just off the top of my head. There's a lot of food right here, which isn't a bad thing either. Uh, I'm gonna come down here and we'll probably explore these ruins, but we'll do it in a second after we decide where we want to settle our city. Because if we can settle our city and move our hero into that unit before we search, there's a chance to get a little bit better results, I think. Uh, but that may only be with uh, the hero skill that we haven't unlocked yet or something of that nature. So yeah, if we start where we started, we get 7 food, 21, pro oh, 21 production, damn. Uh, so here we would be kind of light on science, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, we really, we do want a lot of production. Production is kind of a primary thing here, but so is food. Food and production, when we're starting, are very important. I think what we'll do is potentially go up here. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, we're going to go right there. Hey, look, we got Delvers, y'all. Okay, Delvers aren't bad. I like having Delvers. Delvers mean more dust for us. That's always good. Uh, so we put our first city here because we're going to build across here to get some more science and stuff. And this is sort of, in my opinion, the best starting Fidzy we could get. So I'm going to put the Founder's Memorial down and move our, our one population. Actually, since one turn will generate another person, I'm going to move them back into food. That's one of my favorite things about Endless Legend, guys, is the... Uh, the micro feels just right to me. Like, there's just enough of it, if if that makes any sense. Do your searching. Five glass steel, five science. Hey! <laughs> That's actually amazing, because it means if we don't spend any glass steel, we're going to basically complete our first couple of quests just by existing, which is perfect. Uh, we do need to do research. Let's go do research. Check in this tab real quick just to make sure everything's good. Everything looks fine. Okay, so for research, guys, I haven't played this in a long time, but I do remember my priority order here. We want Mill Foundry first because it's production, then we want Cultivation because that'll hook us up with some food. We're going to follow that up with Public Library to get our basic science, uh, and then Empire Mint to get our basic dust. Anywhere in here we can go after this Geomancer, but I'm not really rushing for it because we don't need to. I would like to potentially unlock... Well, let's see. How do we want to do this? Getting the ability to parlay, I think, after that is going to be kind of important. But we could also go for this ruins thing first. Sometimes I like to go to go for search party first just because it has a lot of value in the early game. Uh, but I think in this case we'll skip over it. We'll get parlay next, then influence, and then 
that'll probably put us, yeah, that'll put us at eight techs and get us into tier two. So that is all of our tier one science already figured out, which is another thing I like about this game is it's, a, it, it's fairly easy to pre-plan like that because uh, you don't expand in the same way that you expand in endless space. Okay, we're going to go ahead and end our turn here. The Volcano Formation machines are powered by strategic resources. Make sure you have five units of a single strategic resource stockpiled. Uh, okay, that's, that's really hard, guys. I don't know where we're going to get five units of a single strategic resource. I don't know how that's going to happen. I mean, we've got titanium and glass steel here, but God, it's going to take turns. It's going to take turns to set up. I'm just being a, a silly asshole right now, aren't I? Um, that's okay. <laughs> I, I am that sometimes. Let's uh, let's put the glass steel in queue. Let's also put the titanium in queue. The reality is, though, Mill Foundry is going to come up next turn, and that's going to take priority probably over both of those because uh, we now have enough to, to colonize our first area. And I mean, that's where we're really at here. We're going to be searching ruins and exploring for the next couple of turns. Uh, especially since we're waiting for the parlay tech to talk to the Delvers here. Delvers are a good pickup, but I would have much rather had uh, a different minor faction. Like, a couple of times when I was just screwing around, I got Silix and then I got Kazanji, and both times I was just like, that's a win, man. That's a that's a solid win. Uh, let's go take a look at our stone, our stone Sentinel real quick. So he does have disease immunity. Inner fire is something you'll see common to all their units. Takes no damage from lava flows and plus 20 damage on volcanic tiles. This is what I mean, guys. They get better stats on volcanic tiles. They get better damage on volcanic tiles. Basically, as long as you're fighting on your chosen ground, you're going to win. And that's totally cool. I actually like that mechanic. See, even their settlers have inner fire. So, like, I'll tell you all a funny story about that. Um, I actually got into a combat and I had the... <laughs> I had their settler as a as a reinforcement and I didn't notice, but he jumped in and whooped on some Kazanji and survived. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I guess that, uh, I guess their settlers ain't no joke. Y'all better be afraid. Okay, that's good. We're gonna end our turn. Uh, so Mill Foundry should be up and ready to go. Might, nah, we're not gonna let the glass steel thing finish. Uh, so we'll get another... We got 10 grass silk, so we're probably going to go pop that off. No, we're not. We don't have any trade routes. Uh, okay. We must begin to make the world more hospitable for the Haku Kapaku. Volcaniform 10 tiles. That is a different mission than I've gotten before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there's seven from doing that. Uh, so if we leave them there, we'll get another person in one turn. How about if we put one? No. Considering we'll get another person in one turn doing that, I'm going to just go ahead and do that. I'm also going to put Mill Foundry at the front, and I might use Dust to buy out our Glass Steel Extractor, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to save that to try to pick up our first hero. Yeah, I think that's a little bit smarter. Uh, and I'll put the Settler in queue probably behind the Glass Steel Extractor, because we're going to need just a little bit more, I think. Well, no. I mean, we have enough for two Volcaniformers right now, so that's fine. Go, baby, go! Uh, I would love to know what our neighboring regions are and what minor factions are within them because that is a big, big thing for us. I'm also going to turn the FIDS display off right now because, like, we don't need it right now. And this is such a beautiful game. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I actually feel bad leaving it up. Look at how beautiful that biome is, though. Look at that. And let's let's take a look at, look at their cities because they're super cool. They look like they're made out of stone. Look at that. That's beautiful. I love the, the design aesthetic of uh, the new faction. Whoa, 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 is this another volcanic one? Do we not even have to terraform to settle? That would be good. Uh, okay, we're gonna end the turn. This may be another volcanic uh, region, that would be great. I haven't discovered volcanic regions outside the one we started in, in any of my other playthroughs, so I just assumed that we would have to terraform every additional volcanic region we wanted. Uh, that may have been a wrong assumption at this point. Because these guys can walk right into this volcanic terrain, and let's see if there's anything great in it. Hello, hello. A minor faction that I would not mind having, though. Uh, let's search this. Five glass steel, ten science. All right. Uh, yeah. That's fine. We'll just have them go like that. Uh, we could produce a unit with like high movement just to explore but I usually wait for the Geomancer with them to do that just because the Geomancer does a really really good job of that. Uh, do we want seed storage before or after the Settler? I'm gonna rush the Settler like I'm gonna put him 
right up behind the mill foundry because we do want to start getting a second city running as soon as possible. Uh, go, go, go. No, that's right. We got to end our turn. Ten tiles. Damn, I've never gotten that one. That one's kind of nuts. That's a lot of terraforming. Um, okay. Get your arse up here. What you got? What you got? What you got? Man, these are like really crappy regions too. Look at this. They're super thin. They're like, look at me. I'm a region, but not really. Like, hardly have anything in me. Uh, this region... Looks like it could have some potential, though. So we're going to keep scouting that region. We may not need to put the settler right where he's at. I think we can actually bump him down behind the seed storage. Yeah, that's that's probably better. Oh, and we have the resources to build the Museum of Origo, which is something we should prioritize. Let's go with... Well, first of all, what direction do we want to grow this city? I'm going to turn Fids back on for a second. So if we grow down like this, we'll get quite a bit of resources. We could also grow straight down like this. Um, hmm. We could grow across like this. This is mainly for our first bit of growth. Eventually we'll fill this whole area, but I think what we're going to do is grow across like this. Because that way we'll get a little bit of science, a little bit of dust, some extra production. There's a lot of things along this run. Uh, which means that when we go to place the Museum of Origo, we're going to want to place it maybe right here. Yeah, probably right here, because the more levels it gets, the more benefits it's going to grant us, and we'll be able to level that pretty easily. Uh, I like to build in the two-line method. I think that's the most effective thing. Now that we're not getting a unit in one turn from that, I'm going to move these guys over to production to speed up all the other things we're doing. Uh, and yeah, we can put another titanium thing in queue. Center for Mineralogy is kind of strong. We could get that. We could also get Husbandry Center. I'm going to put both of those in queue, but they're, they're things that we don't need. They're things we want. Uh, I like to build cities out pretty, pretty profusely before I get super heavy into military, but that's probably a mistake. I may be doing that wrong. Um, so don't take my advice on that account, y'all. All right, here we go. Next turn. Sorry the turns are taking a second, guys. I just want to make sure I'm not making any silly mistakes after some of the feedback we've got on the, the Endless Space Supremacy series. Like, it's one thing to try to keep it going fast so that things don't sit too long or get boring. It's another to frantically rush and forget where I'm at or what I'm doing. Hello, that is 5 Titanium, 10 Science, and there is another faction right there. Uh, that's, that's not necessarily great. 30 dust, 15 science. Hey. Actually, that is kind of great. That means we'll be able to test our terraformers out soon, guys. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. Oh my gosh. I wonder if we can terraform right next to their starting their starting city and just screw them profusely. That would be hilarious. Oh, did you expect to have fids? No fids for you. That would be really, really good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that for sure. I wonder who that is too, though. Like, hopefully it's not Cravers. I, I don't really want to brawl with the Cravers right off the bat. I don't think that that's something we're necessarily going to get the best of. Man. Museum of Origo, if we can get it, is going to be really, really nice. Uh, public Library is about to finish. See, so the Museum of Origo is an interesting one, too, because it's like, okay, if we focus on that, what are we giving up? Um, and we're giving up getting science and dust base stuff down a little bit sooner. You've encountered these guys. Hi there. H how you doing? You sure had a part of mouth. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, guys. I'm just having fun, like, messing with them. It's cool. We're your friends. We're totally not going to terraform right next to your main city and screw you over. Look, we complimenting you. We like you. You cool. Ar Ardent mages, it's cool, man. A new empire plan will be unlocked in three turns. All right, so we don't have two cities, which is good, because that'll reduce the cost needed to get the stuff we want. Uh, and what we want is this, this, and this. We don't care too much about the two vision. That'll be 30 influence. We have eight. We're generating two a turn. How many will we generate if we do this? Eight. Three turns. That should be enough. Uh, so we're going to put everybody into influence for the next three turns to make sure we have what we want. 
And in the meantime, our units shall keep moving. Oops, search that. <laughs> okay. See, I don't... And I missed it. Again, like, that was a mistake because I was trying to rush or whatever. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to, to be smarter about this. Dust blizzards blow over Origa. Strange dust activity on temple ruins. Dust conflicts emanate from the land, granting XP and temporary boost to armies collecting them. Oh, yes, guys. We are... Okay, so this is our first uh, summer season. Isn't that beautiful? I'm trying to get it to... Sh no, no, don't move. Just... I love this beautiful Aurora Borealis effect right there. Like, it really does... It's it's kind of pretty to just sit and watch. Like, I know that sounds silly, but it really is pretty to just sit and watch. So these are dust clouds. If we move through them, we get a, a good bit of dust. Uh, there's also these confluxes right here. So empowering complex, plus 50% attack. Uh, conflux effects don't stack within the same type. So there are different types of confluxes. Here's another one. This is minus 25% 20 minus 25 of max life when entering. Wow. Uh, nope. We're good, thanks. Not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna zoom out for a second because I wanna see if we found any good resources here. So it looks like there's titanium here. I'm gonna bring this guy down this way for a sec. Okay, is that another? Yeah, that's another Ursi's village. What what conflux are you? Minus 60% upkeep on unit. Hello, hello, we're gonna go get you. Uh, if we can find a ruin during these these summer seasons when the eclipses are up, ruins are really really profitable. But I, we're like super out of range for them. There aren't really any ruins left in our range because we've been out exploring. So, yeah, there is that. Uh, come on, let me see it. Anything? Wow. All right, let's go here. Uh, we haven't been in this region, so we're gonna head for this one and try to clear it out. Ooh, pretty. Um, and that should be it for this turn. Everything's good over here. Yeah, I mean, we could get public libraries in the queue. Let's let's do that. Uh, and we'll push it to there. We only need one strategic resource generator in order to keep our volcano forming going. Uh, which we haven't even had to do that much because we did spawn right next to another volcanic area. Which isn't bad because it means we can settle here with reasonable assuredness of what we're going to get. And uh, it's it's actually a pretty decent location. The only thing we have over there right now, though, is titanium. There may be luxury resources over here, but we wouldn't see them just yet because we haven't gotten the uh, luxury resource tech. That's one of the things that always threw me about Endless Legend, but it, it's kind of one of those great decision pieces, too, and that is that, like... We're gonna come up here and see if we can net this this dust right here. Go get it! Get that dust cloud. Huh. Player army upkeep minus six. Interesting. Is that what those little things do? Oh, no, those are just they do different things. That's interesting. Player army upkeep. Meh. Upkeep's cool, but I was hoping for a, a damage boost, especially with these Ursi's guys running around now, because they are no joke. Okay. Uh, uh, what are you guys doing? You're going to come back down here. And this is Seraton. I don't really care for the Seraton, so we're not going to go after that region. Uh, there's also not anything particularly great resource-wise. I'm going to turn off the Fids graph for a second, because we don't really need it right now. Do we have a settler ready? We do. All right, let's make a settler. Uh, we do need to worry about this guy now, so what I think I'm gonna do is have these these armies kind of meet in the middle and go take care of him before we send our settler over so the settler doesn't get wrecked. Because that would be sad. We don't want our settler get wrecked. And honestly, I should have just put a volcano former down. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna drop one somewhere, which will let you guys see what it does, but it'll also get us closer to that objective. Nah, it feels weird to waste it, though. I'm gonna move into this region like we talked about, and then we'll look at it. Uh, Altar of Origa will be available once we've gathered enough pearls. Winter appears to be coming very soon. So, that's fun. I'm gonna get everything we want from that. And now that the influence is no longer necessary, we're gonna come back to our city. And we are going to move all three of those guys back into production where they belong. Always live in the production. There's emeralds here. Okay, so emeralds are a good pickup for us. And of course we find a ruin right after the, the summer season ends. That's annoying. 
Go guys, go! Show me show me something awesome. What's this? That's meteor fields. Okay, we can live with that. Uh, so this region right here so far has emeralds. It also has some anomalies. And the eyeless ones, who aren't bad. Eyeless ones are healers. Uh, so that could actually be beneficial to have. Oh goody, the delvers are out in force. So we're going to end up putting this unit back into the garrison just to be safe. Um... I really want to get Museum for of Origa because somebody else can snatch that up. So we'll get Museum of Origa. After that, we'll do the Empire Mint. Uh, and then I think after the Empire Mint, I want some more units. Or rather, we need some more units. Um, so we're going to pump out some really cheap units just to have something going on there. And that should be it. Okay. Ending the turn. Trying to make sure everything is good and I'm not glancing over anything or doing anything silly. Oh, those are nice. Happiness is always nice in a new settlement. Let's go this way and see if we can reveal more of this uh, region. Nope, nothing great there. Anything, anything? Oh, titanium. Titanium is good. We like titanium. Let's go check our boosters real quick. So we've got a gold booster or a dust booster and we've got trade route booster. Neither one of those are particularly useful for us. Okay, you guys need to combine now so that we can uh, go whoop on that Ursies and make this place safe for our people. Ooh, Luki, Luki, that's a nice one. How about this? 11, 12, 12. That's, that's pretty good. What is this? Yeah, this is better. Uh, yeah, let's do that. We're gonna place that. We'll have these guys join them next turn though. It'll be fine. Uh, so we're gonna put our first Volcaniformer down. You guys will get a chance to see that before the end of this episode. I'm sorry it took us so long to find a place that I felt was like suitable to Volcanoform, but you really wanna be particular about where you put those early on because it essentially decides where you're able to settle. Uh, and we have this volcanic region over here that we're definitely aspiring to get into, but the, oh. Facility revealed. Luxury boost facilite. I don't I don't know where we revealed that. With the passage of an era and the advancement of science, some ancient mechanism has decided that it's time to open fortress facilities. Oh, so that's out in the water. That's what that is. Hey, how about you join up? Good, good, good. Now come over here. Drop the volcano for my right... There? There. Oh, why does winter have to screw with it? I think it's right here. Winter screws with everything, including volcano former predi uh, predictions, which is kind of annoying. Ooh. Super tempted to take this settler out, but I think instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy out a stone sentinel, so that'll give us somebody who can be in this region collecting these pearls uh, and potentially fighting against the uh, Delvers. And because of the fact that this is volcanic terrain, we should have a significant advantage against the Delvers. Nothing like volcanic terrain to make things a little bit easier for you. Alright, get your butt down there, grab that pearl. Do to do. We gonna come over here. Do we have the uh, language square yet? We do indeed. Okay, so we can parlay with our delvers now. That's a good plan. So we're gonna wanna do that with this guy. And then with this unit, we want to put down our volcaniformer right here. Drop it like it's hot. Okay, so see that radius, guys? That's what's going to get turned into volcanic tiles, and it'll happen in exactly three turns. We're going to move over here in the meantime and probably just wait, although we could parlay with these guys. Let's parlay with the eyeless ones. Tribe has informed you their kidnapped brothers are somewhere in a nearby region called Janeldas. Locate the right Saraton village, which has a marker on it, and destroy it. Okay. We can do that. Uh, where exactly is that marker, mind you? I know there's... <laughs> it's been so long, guys. I know, there it is. Wait, so is it this? Or that's the eyeless one. Is it one we haven't seen? Because none of those are glowing. There must be another one up here or something. Okay. We're going to head into that region and get started on that. Uh, because... If we can parlay with these guys before we get this actually up and running, that would be great for us, but I'm not going to hold my breath because I doubt that'll happen. Ending the turn. 
Okay. Come on, game. You can do it. Yes, no more winter. Winter is annoying as hell. All right, so we got another pearl. Yes, I know we have boosters we could be using, but I'm waiting until it makes sense to use them, which is not right now. Parlay with these guys. Turn to the village with an army that contains a minimum of three minor faction units. Well, that's obnoxious. Do we have access to uh, the mercenary market yet? We do not. Okay, so I'm gonna add mercenary market to our queue because we're gonna need it for that. Um, all right, let's do that. Maybe we'll just, maybe we'll just military. Maybe we'll just military. Uh, I think we're gonna kill them off because it's just easier than this silly ass quest, but we will kill them off, we'll rebuild them, we'll have the Delvers. We may assimilate them, we may not. I'm actually considering assimilating over here now because it looks like there are three Saraton villages, which means that we will get their bonus a lot stronger than just getting this one Delver down here. Although the Delver bonus is for luxury res or uh, strategic resources, I'm sorry, which is incredibly useful for us, guys. That's actually really, really good for this faction. So we will find out more about all that in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed the episode, click that like button. I hope the pace was more to your liking for this one, guys. Uh, click subscribe if you want to know when more videos are going up. And definitely follow me on Twitter, at GamerUnderDev. That's where all the things get put up. So if you're into this, if you're into ES2 Supremacy, if you like Battletech, all that stuff goes up. Thank you guys for watching and keep gaming responsibly. Bye!